we're going to make chocolate cherry scones. It's a formula out of the book, and what you need to realize is it's a fat and flour cut-in method again. A scone is, is a beautiful biscuit. Uh, we want it light and flaky. The, the beauty of this formula is that the scone itself is delicious, and we're adding chocolates and cherry to it. It could be an orange cherry, uh, an orange chocolate. It really can mix it up, and once you get the foundation of the scone itself, the mixing method, what's going into it, then I think you can really build on it entirely. So it talks about, I'm gonna follow my method, which I have right here. I've added my buttermilk, my sugar, my heavy cream, and now I'm gonna add my vanilla in a bowl. And I'm gonna whisk it together. I got my sugar in here. I'm gonna whisk it together and just incorporate it. And then instead of cutting it in like we did with the streusel by hand, we're gonna let the mixer do the work for us. So we have, I'm gonna set this aside. Um, so I have my butter, I have my flour, and my baking powder. Right here, let's see if I can get it open. Oh, it's always so hard for me. And we're going to use the paddle for this, and the paddle is going to do a lot of the work for us and break that um, butter up into the flour, which I like a lot. It makes it very lovely. I'm going to add my baking powder. And then we're going to use a paddle for this method on our mixer. Come up here, and I'm going to kind of let the flour and baking powder get together. And I'm going to start to add my butter, and it's cut up in perfect size pieces. And we're going to let those break down. And like we did with the streusel, I think I might go a little bit bigger versus streusel was very small. Uh, we might go a little bit larger, like maybe a hazelnut size, kind of like right in there, and let our butter get incorporated. Uh, it's going to take a little while. We don't want to cream it by any means, and that's why we want the butter super cold, uh, because we want it to layer itself within the flour. I'm stuck in the bottom of my cup. There you go. There you go. Here you go. There you go. Here I am. There it goes. The paddle's going to do a lot of the work for us, but like I said, we're not creaming. Oops, it's going to flip itself up. A little flour. And we're going to let that kind of go around um, for a period of time where we're going to kind of look for a little bit larger uh, than a pea size, like in between pea and hazelnut. Um, and then when we get to that point, then we're going to add our wet. We're going to let it incorporate it very quickly. Maybe do a little bit of on the bench. All right, our flour and butter look just right. Uh, I have my liquid that I'm going to add with a spatula and get it incorporated into my dry with my butter. My butter is still in nice pieces uh, and it's going to create a nice flaky scone dough. What I'm looking for. I'm going to let it incorporate itself. Very quickly, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to add my chocolate chips and my cherries and I'm going to let them help kind of mix it as well and I want to do it quickly. I, like I said, I don't want to cream it, I don't want to leave it on this mixer very long. I'm really trying to get that flour and fat um, created and to come in here and mix it too long is not very good for it. So we're going to be very careful about it. We're going to let it incorporate and just very quickly, and we're going to stop it and take it off the bench right there. We're going to drop it down. And we're going to pull this product off the mixer. Like I said, I drop my arm of my mixer and I'm going to pull it off. I'm going to scrape this down and we've got to get our paddle off. Now, getting it off, and once again, like I said, I'm going to uh, give it a good scrape. I, th I think that's really important. I'm going to unhook it here. Come through. Get this off. Scrape my paddle really well. Once again, and like I said, I didn't really cream it. Uh, it's a little bit uh, drier, uh, which I like. Uh, the chocolate chips and the cherries helped incorporate it for me, um, which makes it all the easier. And you want to make sure each scone gets a lot of deliciousness in it. That's super important. So we're going to come in here and scrape it real good. What we're going to do is we're going to portion this. We're going to take this dough and we're going to scale it into three equal portions. Scones are classically triangles, um, and so we're going to teach you a simple, simple way to come in uh, using a pan to create them into triangles. We're going to egg wash the tops of them and bake them, and they're going to be beautiful. I did want to show you once the scone dough comes out of the bowl, and like I said, I didn't really mix it or cream it. I kind of incorporated it very quickly, added the chocolates and the cherries. Uh, I'm going to come in, I have some dry at the bottom of the bowl, and I, I'm going to incorporate it. 
I put a little flour on it, but I still have some dry in the bottom, which needs to get in. So I'm gonna let my bench knife help me do that uh, and bring my dough, folding it, right? Still creating layers the whole time. I, I don't want to, I'm not really trying to knead it. I'm trying to fold itself over so I keep that butter uh, in layers. And you gotta chop it and the cherries try to escape all the time. So you gotta kind of come in and catch them and grab them and put them back in there. But you can see I pull myself back together. If anybody grabs off. come back together. I don't want to give anybody that's escaped. From this point, what we're going to do is we're going to divide it into three equal portions, and then that becomes our scones that we're going to break up into triangles. So that's what we'll do next.